Hey, Lannis, good morning. Good morning, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We'll start morning prayer in about three minutes. Morning, Amanda. Morning, everybody. Welcome. Morning, Kim. The sharp eyed among you will recognize the fact that we are not on the patio. No, it was a little cold. <laughs> a little chilly in it. The angle of the sun is such that it's either in the camera or in our eye. So we are uh, taking a short break from the patio. But don't give up on us. We'll be back out there. Yes. Maybe even on some of these nice winter mornings. Nice. But yeah, the cool mornings. We'll see. <clears throat> it's not quite winter, fall. Morning, Jenny and Kim. Amanda, yes, it is cold. Sally ran this morning and said it was a bit chilly. But not windy, so that was good. Yeah. It was nice. Though. It's going to be a pretty day. Yep. We'll start in about a minute. Thanks for being with us. <clears throat> Morning, Lois. Okay, good morning. <clears throat> Glad you're all here. Got about one minute and we will be starting morning prayer. Morning, Trisha. <clears throat> so what books will we need this morning? We need the Book of Common Prayer. And your hymnal, the we usual. <laughs> we will be we will be singing later. Got to sing some of those wonderful Advent hymns That's so right. when we have the chance. That's right. <laughs> Good morning, Richard. So I have a little bit after 8 o'clock. I think we'll go ahead and get started with Morning Prayer, Rite 2, getting on page 75 in your Book of Common Prayer. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Continuing on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Our King and
same Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. And on page 82, let us greet this gloriously bright morning with the words of the Jubilati, Psalm 100 on the bottom of page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And continue. Our psalm for today is Psalm 38 on page 636 of your Book of Common Prayer. And we will read responsively by whole verse. As soon as I get there. <laughs> Psalm 38. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. <clears throat> I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O oh Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding. My strength has failed me and the brightness of mine eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I become like <coughs> one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no dissent. For in you, Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, Do not let them rejoice at my expense, for those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. As, as it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Oh, I like this one. Our first uh, reading is from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
when one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live call that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now this, this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. And he said, Go and say this to people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitants and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends anyone, everyone, far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land, even if a tenth part of it in it remains. It will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And turning now to page 87, let's read together the, again from Isaiah, uh, Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, shine for, for your light has come, come and, the and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. you. For behold, darkness covers the land, doom, gloom, and shrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no be more be in your, in your land, ruin, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first New Testament reading today is 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified by his saints, to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, on page 93 in your prayer book, the Canticle 17, the Song of Simeon, or the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our final reading from the New Testament, from the Gospel this morning, the Gospel according to John, chapter 7, starting with verse 53, going to chapter 8, verse 11, in the Gospel according to John. And each of them went home while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, it's forgiveness for me. It is. Yes. Yeah, you can hear that now. Continuing on page 96, we proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. On page 98, Suffrage B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. If you would... Begin putting prayers into the uh, comment section, please. Um, we'll begin those specific prayers in just a few moments. Would you be pleased, please? Mm -hmm. 
on page 99 of Follett for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on page 823, the prayer for social justice. Grant, O oh Lord, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land. The barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On page 824, in times of conflict. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And on page 827, in these times, so much public anxiety and Essentially shouting discord for those who influence public opinion. Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices. Direct in our time, we pray, those who speak where many listen and write what many read, that they may do their part in making the heart of this people wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous, all to the honor of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Back on page 100. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, it's time for that hymn. Advent hymn. <laughs> Can you tell I like Advent? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we, it's, we, we wearing, oh, I'm wearing blue, it's Advent. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen would like it because it's purple. We're going to sing together hymn 75. Hymn 75, all three verses. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted. The lofty hills brought low, make straight all the crooked places where the Lord our God may go. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up to the heights and sing. Proclaim to the desolate people the coming of their King. Like the flowers of the field may perish, like grass our works decay. The power and pomp of nations shall pass like a dream away. But 
what the word of our God endureth. The arm of the Lord is strong. He stands in the midst of nations, and he will right the wrong. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd, the lambs he gently hold. To pastures of peace he'll lead them, and bring them safe to his fold. I love that. I do too. <laughs> I like that trip to the fall. I love that. Gently holding us. I know. As we gather this morning before God and with each other would call us to remember both the beauty of the world around us, the many, many blessings with which we live and are, have been given, would also help us to remember that there is so much hurt and pain in the world right now that we not become callous to it, or we not lose sight of uh, of the extent of it, just because it's constantly in the headlines and constantly in the news. The residential nursing homes, where over 75% of the residents are inflicted with the virus, and over 25% of the staff. And yet the staff carries on and tries to care for their residents. The doctors and nurses and paramedics and the frontline workers in all the healthcare environments that are fighting daily for long hours and in very, very tough conditions to help all of us in overcrowded ICUs. The hope of the vaccine. Guide those making decisions on its production and its distribution and how it is handed out to those who accept it. Let it be the protection that we hope that it will and the, one of the first steps towards getting our lives back to some sort of normal and our loved ones safe. Plus those who must travel in these times Keep them safe with them as they guide and help us to minister to one another and to those in our community. Be with church staffs everywhere of every denomination as, as they guide their flocks and help people see that your way is the way to the long-term salvation and health of body and mind to which we're all called. Watch over our families. Be with those seeking employment, particularly with Christian, with Chris, with Jeff, with those in our families who are unemployed or underemployed, as they seek to stay healthy and to care for themselves and their family. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, Lord, we give thanks today for our parish, for the Church of the Epiphany, where every member in his or her own way has said in those famous words from Isaiah, Here I am, Lord, send me. Yes. Very grateful for this parish of servants and their strong hearts for your your praise and reaching out in your world. Now, let's see what else. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we pray for all those suffering in Honduras and Central America and for everyone with COVID, um, for all patients, healthcare providers, doctors, and nurses, for Melody awaiting a COVID test result, and her family, including her mother-in-law, Sharla, for all students, parents, oh, yeah. teachers, and administrators. Yes, Lord, we pray for them daily. Prayers for Ruby, who lost her husband suddenly, and the repose of the soul of Philip. Patricia's brother-in-law, Tom Belden, Belden, hospitalized last night with pancreatitis. Lord, your special blessings on him and on the family. We pray for the repose of the soul of Paul Pugh, who died of COVID. And we give thanks once again for our parish and every member of it. Amen. Amen. A lot to be thankful for. Indeed. All right. Thank you for that and for your constant prayers. Returning to the prayer book, we give thanks in the words of the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty oh God, God, Father of all mercies, mercies we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. I hope you have a chance to be outside in this gorgeous, slightly nippy, but beautiful weather. And we will see all of you soon. Bye-bye. God's peace.